popping. Over to your left. There's one behind the chimney. One just fired up. I got four of them. Major sighting here. Well, I saw a uh, a huge craft just kind of come right over Squaw Peak. Um, that was, you know, it was just breathtaking. Uh, no, I'm off. Let me see. It's just I could play. Maybe you could it. zero it in on there. Fireball. Two of them side by side. Yeah, it does Maybe look that's like why it's so a, yellow when there's two. There's the two of them make it. This is the location. This is Steve right here. He's the one who <laughs> kind of got it. There's Rhonda. Cool puppy. Let's get back to the saucer. I don't know if I'm calling them. You want to lower it? I, 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 need a chair. I got another spotting scope somewhere here if somebody wants to look to that. There's two side by side. This is slightly different. There's another one. Oh, look. One, two. Wait, where? There's another one, too. Where? There's two more. Look at that. Please, guys. There's another one. No, we're, we're just excited. Why not? They keep coming. Wait, I see. Whoa. I got that Wait, one on video. There's just four of them. Look at there's three of them all together. I got the third one popping. Over to your left. There's one behind the chimney. One just fired up. I got four of them. Major sighting here. That's no, there's five. Oh. Another one just showed up. They're multiplying. Whoa! Maybe somebody's setting up lights. You see that? No, those are in the sky. There's one underneath the house too. There's one behind the chimney. We need to go to Pecos. I can't see how this works. How does this work? Holy shit! Have you seen that before? Look at my no. That's weird. They're lined up in, in a pattern, man. There's geometry behind this. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even get the them. Off. I've never seen it. Look at that. Man, yeah. this is. What is this? What is Let's this? see. Oh, there's three of them all lined up. No, four, there's Bill. One over, here. Bill. over here, Come there's over four. Here. Yeah. Come there's, look. There's, yeah, I see. Over the top right now. I don't know, but I got it on tape. They just appeared. What does it look like, Bill? What do they look like in your camera? They look like... They look like there's three of them in the What do they look like? Is it like there's spear before? Yeah, they're spears now. They Are they complete circles? Or cut yeah, off? they just transformed into circles right now, right as you were talking. Now they're, tra they're, now they're not spears. Well, see, the way we saw them... Hey, Stephen Greer missed out, didn't he, Bill? Nope. This isn't first for me. Anything like it? I have similar video of this from other people. You see an eye? Like a bullseye? No. Did you show them the tape already? Out of focus here. We got major hockey puck activity. I think that one on the left may split in half. It's how many is there? I got four. Behind a tree. I I got three lined up. Oh no! I forgot to hit the record button. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Anybody got a pull, uh, still camera, 35 millimeter? Hey, look, the one in the middle is doing something. It's going out of alignment. Yeah, it's going out of alignment. It's dropping. The one on the left, did it drop off? No, the one in the middle is dropping slightly, and it's a. Uh, oh, the one on the right's blinking. No, that's because it's going behind a tree now. They're definitely moving. Wait, where, where's the other one? Two, 
No, one one is went behind a tree or something. Yeah. The the one on the right will will be gone in a minute as soon as it goes behind something. Yeah, he's going to take us and see. Yeah, he's going to get up close. It's all clear. Yeah, let's go in a minute here. Okay, number two. Oh, we're down to one. It's 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 winking out or something. Yeah. But there was no like the Clinton day. No. No. <laughs> no. I was on a strict diet. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious now. That that it was a it was a U, unquestionably it was a UFO, which means unidentified flying object. Right. Doesn't nothing, mean we're being visited. Well, it's nothing like anything I've ever seen. And, and you're an Air Force guy. Yeah, yeah, and a pilot. Uh, got a lot of hours flying, so uh, it was pretty breathtaking. And um, and I'll never forget. I I snuck out to see it, um, you know, without DPS, um, which I I'm not supposed to be driving my own car and that kind oh, of yeah. thing. And so, uh, but I told Ann what I was doing. I was going to go up to Squaw Peak and see what everybody was, you know, clamoring about. And um, when I walked in the front door, she looked at me, and I was apparently just normally I'm fair complected and pale anyway, right? And she said, "Oh my gosh!" She said, "She'd look like a ghost." What, what, what did you see? And I said, well, "I don't know what I saw, but it's, it was really something." And I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> and uh, wow, so Were you did it frighten you? No, I, no, I, I think I was kind of in awe, really, you know. How big? Bigger than anything I've ever seen in the sky. Like an aircraft carrier in the yeah, sky? Yeah, 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 something like that, yeah. And it, and it was hard to define because of the light in terms of the size, but it, but it was absolutely silent and had sort of eerie embedded lights. And, you know, so that's what I saw. And I wasn't expecting to see anything because I was looking out over at Luke uh, right. to the west. and. Uh, and then all of a sudden, these people in the park uh, area on the, just on the west side of 51, there were a bunch of people there. Everybody said, oh, look at that. And we turned around, and this thing was coming from the northwest, traveling to the southeast. We now know, um, and it really hit me when, when we were watching the Diamondbacks in game seven, and the B-1 flew over, mm -hmm. over it the wasn't, bomb. Yeah, it wasn't a B-1 bomber. But that thing all of a sudden out of nowhere appears. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I said to somebody that night, I said, well, you know, when they do test these, mm -hmm. they test them in populated areas. They're new stuff. They mm -hmm. test it to see if people detect it. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it was ours? Do you believe it was something from the U.S. government that they no. were kind of flying around? No, it wasn't even close to a B. It was much bigger than a B-1. A B-1 actually isn't that big. I mean, right. I mean if it's, it's at low altitude, it'll appear a big. But no, this, this was totally different. Something, though, that you think our own government may have been kind of running by a populated area to see what would happen? <laughs> well, they, cer they certainly achieved uh, their goal of stirring the pot, if that's what they were doing. But I don't think, I don't think so. I, don't, I think this was technologically far advanced. I, also, I, I, use the, I use the analogy. Can you imagine if you took uh, Christopher Columbus and put him in the cockpit of a Boeing 777? what his reaction would be. He, he wouldn't understand it. He would be convinced that this is something from another world, you know. Is that what and I think, I, I really believe, I believe that. I believe that. But I've always been open to that. You know, we're not alone in the universe. Uh, I agree with we're you gonna find that. We're going to find that out one way or the other. Even Bill Clinton was talking about that the other day on the national news. I saw that. Yeah. I do believe that, that we're mm -hmm. not alone. I just don't mm -hmm. know that we've been visited. But well, you the, think maybe that night we were. I, I think so, yeah. There have been so many different sort of sightings and inexplicable phenomena that, you know, um, but, but the disparity um, in terms of technological progress would be so vast that we would be, I think, of sort of no consequence to whoever is visiting us because the technology to get here would be just beyond anything we could imagine. Did it hover? No, it was just going in a straight line. Slow pace. Yeah, slow pace, yeah. And then, you know, there were all Not the sightings. Flares. There were the sightings of the America West plane coming into Sky yeah. Harbor, said he could have landed on it. It was enormous. Yeah. Like an aircraft carrier in the sky, is that about as close yeah, I as think you that's, could? Yeah, I think that's a fair description. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of 
Interesting. Maybe it's... This took place in Arizona. An unidentified pilot, according to the press cuttings, flying near an airport in Arizona with his son when he spotted six lights in the night sky. So he called from the aeroplane to air traffic control to say, I'm seeing these lights <coughs> here. I wasn't expecting any other planes. There are none supposed to be on my landing path. Can you tell me what's going on? They said there are no other planes. He said, I'm seeing six bright lights coming towards me. Mystery unresolved. Except oh? the tail number for that plane was Bonanza 2 Tango Sierra, and I was the pilot. No, no. way. Oliver and I. Yes, take this box. Doesn't man. say that in the yeah. briefing. Take this box. I, well, I should have yeah. read to the end. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver and I were, were flying in. I was flying him to go see his girlfriend. And uh, we were on approach. And uh, I saw six lights over the airport in absolute uniform in a V shape. And, I, and Oliver said to me, I, I was just looking at him and I was coming in. We're maybe a half a mile out. And Oliver said, Pa, do you, what, is, what are those lights? And, I, and I, then it kind of like came out of my <clears throat> reverie, and, and I said, I don't know what they are. I said, uh, he said, are we okay here? And I said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him, and I reported it. And they said, we're not painting anything. We don't show anything. I said, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to declare it's unidentified, it's flying, and it's six objects. Mm -hmm. We landed. I taxied, dropped him off, took off, went back to L.A., Never said a word. He never said a word. Can you describe to us what you saw that day? Yeah, we were all outside. Someone actually came and got me because I was still inside. And there were maybe a half a dozen, to my recollection, lights that just hung in the air, didn't move. They definitely were not airplanes. And it just baffled all of us uh, and they hung on there for several several minutes like I said these people saw them when I was in the house they came and got me and I still stared outside what I believe would be over 10 minutes how big were they well they were quite in the distance from where I uh, was at and they appeared pretty large they um, but it's really hard for me to give a measurement, whether it was the size of a football field or two football fields. I like because they were so far off in the distance, but they were very large. I couldn't quite describe the shape because all you saw were the big bright lights in the sky. When it finally got here and we realized this thing was coming right over us, we really started getting antsy. And then when it went directly overhead without a sound, it was like, it was like that. It was so big. You couldn't even hear the wind. It was so quiet. It was just... Yeah. It just didn't even do anything. It just came through. It was a giant V, all right? And the right side of the V went over us. The left side was like a couple blocks over it. You just didn't know what to do. You know, it was just like, my God, how big is this thing? It didn't seem threatening because when, when it was right overhead and we couldn't hear a sound, it was like you're just awestruck. He thinks that he said if he had a tennis ball, he could have hit it. <laughs> he could have thrown a tennis ball at it. It was that close. It was very close. He just could have nailed it. Last light went right over my wife and I, and there was no light on the ground. But I could see up inside that it was almost like a recess, and it had fluorescent like light inside, like a gas light of some kind. You could see right through the middle of it, but it was like looking through two-way glass, like through a mirage that you see on the highway or something, or just when it's real hot. Right through there, you can see through, but there was no light coming back or anything like that. It was just really weird. As it went over, it went straight like, like through this V right there, over that guy's house. It took about... 15 minutes to get from way from from when we first saw it all the way till we couldn't saw it. We just re-experience it every time we tell it. You know, it it's like it's it was just yesterday. You know, um, we just never seen anything like it. I was always a, a very polite skeptic. I would never tell something. If they told me they saw something, I would never say you're a liar or anything like that because I don't know. But now I don't know what to think because um, this is impossible. We all looked up at the same time and saw this amazing, huge, dark, silent object that appeared to just be right over our heads. It was awesome. I mean, we were telling ourselves not to blink. 
It was uh, very close to the ground. It was just like floating over the housetops. The, the whole object from front to back, from side to side, it was so big. I would gauge this object to be several football fields. I, I mean, like a mile, maybe more than a mile, maybe even two miles, it was huge. The lights did not move relative to each other. Had they been in a formation of separate aircraft, there would have been a slight relative movement, I would have perceived, and they stayed pretty much just locked in position. In it and it stayed right on it. And what was extraordinary is that light went off and it came on again over a 20 minute period and it did not move from that position because it stayed fixed in the scope. I have to tell you I was really uh, deeply impressed by the display that unfolded. As Jim came up to join me we really were now together to witness a grand display of several orbs that were variously in a straight line as if you could draw a ruler or lay a ruler end to end. Lights going on and off in the same positions and then ending up in a triangle as if to communicate a simple geometric base message. Uh, and from her uh, description of what happened, they did seem to move as a unit and they were able to stop and hover. Not only was it a very significant mass sighting, many investigators call it the largest sighting ever, lasting the longest amount of time seen by the largest number of people, grand scale. But at another level, global media. When I had the experience of seeing some lights out in the distance, the first thing I did as a, I guess, inborn skeptic myself, was just try to run through every possible solution that it could be. And I ran my differential diagnosis of anything it could be, and what I realized pretty quickly was nothing fit. Nothing that I could possibly run through. It definitely, it definitely wasn't flares. It wasn't airplanes. It wasn't street lights. It wasn't something on the mountain. It wasn't anything that I could think of. Illumination flare, which would provide light for people on the ground to see what the enemy might be doing or do work with flare on a daily basis. They weren't flares. I knew they weren't conventional aircraft. Um, flares emit smoke, uh, and the illumination from the flare would illuminate the smoke as well, so you would have a trail from the flare leading up. These lights up here represent aircraft flares. If you'll notice, they are not in any straight line. They vary in distance between each other. And if you look at the top, you can see the smoke. As the flare falls, it leaves a trail of smoke above it from the burning magnesium in the flare. Flares are moving relative to each other. They're moving at different speeds. The Phoenix lights are rock steady. When in between these lights, though, it did seem somewhat denser. It seemed darker, like there was a shape or form going on there that was holding these things together. It was like looking through water. And if you've ever seen that little wavy motion and so forth, that's what that's like. It was an orangish amber light. And it was so rich and lustrous, it's almost as if the objects seemed to be made, comprised of the light itself, which is strange. But imagine if you could, that light would have material property, the physical property. It was almost as if the orb was crafted out of light. They are absolutely perfect in every aspect of of, you know, every geometrical aspect that could be observed. They uh, were perfectly, uniformly round. They were perfectly, uniformly equidistant. Video doesn't do it justice. In real life, they're huge. They're amber. There's no flaring. They're like a ball. Uh, on the video, they flicker, they're white, uh, they're much smaller. But nonetheless, the formations themselves are, are compelling when it got directly over my head, and I mean, I'm talking dead center here. I was right underneath this thing. And I look up, it was like, there was no filament in this thing. They appear to be in a canister. There was light swimming around in this shape or form. We could not see the whole object from front to back, from side to side. It was so big. I would gauge this object to be several football fields. I mean, like a mile, maybe more than a mile, maybe even two miles. It was huge. 
and it just kept going over our heads and going and going and going and it seemed like we could actually just reach up and touch it. It was so low. And I realized it was a manifestation that there was intelligence trying to let us know we're here. Now, let's look at this. I was on the Phoenix City Council. I had no idea anything unusual had taken place until I met a reporter who asked me what had happened and if anybody was investigating. I was on my way into a televised Phoenix City Council meeting and I told her I would ask about it. Nobody is doing any investigation on it and I'd just like to know if anybody has any information from the city and if the city is checking into it apparently. When I asked my fellow council members if anything was being done to investigate the matter, I was, all I got was silence. Or, um, it was as you know, if I hadn't asked the question at all. They just ignored me and moved on to the next councilman. People are starting to ask more questions. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman Siebert. Uh, I was just going to give the number. But this was obviously different, that there were hundreds of witnesses and no call for action. I was stunned. Up until then, Senator McCain and I had a pretty good relationship, but I think his people got a little upset when I kept pushing for action. This whole thing has been a government cover-up, I know firsthand. When I asked the city council for help, I was laughed at. The governor, he made a joke of everything. And Senator McCain gave me the cold shoulder when I asked him for action. A few weeks after the Phoenix Lights incident, a man named Richard Curtis called me at home to say that he had taken some amazing footage on professional equipment of this object capturing actual structure. I asked Mr. Curtis to send a copy to me at my office so I could look at it. I planned to send it to Village Lab so that they could analyze it. Two men dressed in black suits, hats, and sunglasses came to Richard Curtis's door and asked him for the videotape. According to Mr. Curtis and two other witnesses, the men took the tape, got into a black sedan with dark tinted windows, and left. We're going to have to wake up. We're going to have to become knowledgeable. We're going to have to uh, develop new science because we're still don't know all the answers to the questions, who are we, how do we get here, where are we going, and our relationship to the cosmos. We're having trouble with our relationship with each other. We still use violence to settle conflict. And if we're to have a sustainable civilization, those behaviors must go away. And they're not going to go away until we change and find peace within ourselves.